snakes. It's, you know, I mean, you'll find them. <laughs> I mean, when you're in the wilderness state between being saved and sanctified friends, what happened to generation one of Israel? They waited around in the wilderness to die. They say it was like 85 funerals a day. Who wants to see that? You know what I mean? That's, that's what will happen to you if you don't go into holiness. You know, the whole idea is you need to die to yourself again. All right? Well, that's my horrible Hebrew. Back when I started these things, how do you like it? They came up with a whole bunch of numbers and E, 8, 9, or whatever that says. <laughs> and that, that's supposed to say Kadesh Barnea. You know, and if you come to the foot of the promised land like Israel did, they came to a city that meant, meant holiness. Kadesh Barnea means holiness. Okay? And they were to go in by faith. And instead of doing that, they, they remained outside the wilderness within a mile. Some, some say it was within a mile. They had the promised land right in front of their faces they weren't going. It's crazy. All right, and then we have Conquering Canaan, which I told you that I have a whole chapter on that in my second book. I mean, third book. And then Walking with God. This is the idea of Enoch. I mean, I love this story, too. My brother Chris wrote a sermon on this guy. I mean, he lived 300 years of holiness. I mean, the guy was born a sinner like all of us. Okay? He got saved. He got sanctified. And the idea of walking with God, that's the Old Testament term for sanctification. And basically, God's just watching this man and watch this man. I, I told somebody last night who was in the service, he, he, did, he failed to get anointed during the anointing service. And so he came to me afterwards and said, I didn't get anointed. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. And I said, no, we'll, we'll work right now. I anointed him for healing. And then he said, you know, I want to be sanctified. And I, I'm a little confused over this issue. And so we kind of dealt with the same idea here. Uh, he, he, you know, when I was trying to go with Enoch, I was trying to talk to you about how he was walking with God. I feel like, I oh mean, I can't connect my idea now. I'm a little too, I'm a little too tired. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, yeah, I, I know where I was going with Enoch, but I can't remember what how that tied in right now. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Basically, God was so impressed with Enoch. Oh, that's what I said to him. I said to him, you know, God's eyes are focused on holiness people. You know, I know he, he loves everybody, but I'm telling you, if you want his eyes focused on you, where he's just, I mean, you're just his man, you're his woman, I'm telling you, you need to be sanctified, okay? And that's what happened with Enoch. He's just watching this guy. You can just picture it. Day after day, he's walking before God and being perfect, just like, Gen just like Abraham. And he's walking it for so long that God finally says, okay, just come on. <laughs> Man, you can't earn your way to heaven. But when you stay where God can put you only, when you get saved and you get sanctified and you stay there, God's just going <laughs> to, you might get tired of it. Just say, come on up here, man. This is a holy place. Come up here. You're ready, man. You're, you're not, this is crazy. And my brother broke all down the every day, every hour this guy was walking like that. Anyway. And then walking through the halves. And am I almost out of time now? Okay. Walking through the halves. Uh, there's a series on faith that was done by an uh, Israelite scholar through James Dobson. The movies are kind of outdated, but I think they made them into DVDs, and I definitely know you can research them online. They're called Faith Lessons in the, in the Bible or in the Scripture. Uh, Ray Vanderlaan. You know, you'll love that one. You need to go into that. Oh, man, he, he brings in wrath. He brings in holiness. I mean, it's really, really, really neat. Okay, a set of DVDs. But in, anyway, he talks about this, and he talks about how Abraham had to walk through the halves. And so he says, put all these animals on the ground. God tells him to do that. Cut them in half and put them on the ground and dig a little ditch down the middle of it and there's blood pouring down that. And I want you to walk between the halves. So he literally had to put his feet in that and he'd walk through that. And when he was doing it, what he was symbolizing is he was saying, you know what, God, you can wipe me out if I break this covenant with you. That's what he was saying. You know, and you know what's awesome is God also walked between the halves. And, you know, God can't lie. That's the, that's the difference, though. But he, he basically said, I walk through the halves, too. And he says, hey, if I break my side of this covenant, you know, you could just forget about me. But he's not going to break it. See, friends, this is something for you, too. <laughs> when, you're, when you're going through the halves, and, and friends, the other side of it is judgment. I mean, this is what Israel had to go through because they wouldn't listen. All right. And then we have the hill of the Lord in heaven. This is holiness or hell. In the Old and New Testament, remember that? It says, who can ascend on the hill of God? You know, who's going to go to heaven? That's basically what it's saying. And it says, he was clean hands and a pure heart. You know, this is the type of thing in Psalm 24, verse 3. Well, when you get to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, he's saying the same thing. It says, without peace. No. Yeah, okay. People have overemphasized the beginning part of the verse. It does say that you need to seek peace with all men, but friends, not at the cost of holiness. 
All right? Don't try to get along before you try to get them right. <laughs> All right? It says, seek peace and the sanctification. That's how it really translates. You know, people will sit there and say, Ben, it's just a holiness walk. You need to go to heaven. No, 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 no. In Hebrews, listen to this. This is a scary book. It's 3 o'clock. He comes to these people who he says in Hebrews chapter 5 and, and chapter 6, when you're breaking into the, fir the first verses, like 6, 1 to 4, he basically says, I want you guys to go on to perfection. You guys should be teachers on this subject by now. Where are you? What are you doing, dummies? That's what he's basically saying. He says, you are back in that earlier teaching, the elementary teachings about repentance and all that stuff, and you should be going on to perfection. So friends, that's the whole point of the Hebrews book. If you go back to chapter 3, it's pretty neat. He goes into the wilderness story. You know, people today are, are frowning on the old timers in our church that used to say, hey guys, you go through get, coming out of Egypt, and then you come to the Red Sea and get saved, you go into the wilderness experience, and then you come to you know, the Jordan River crossing, you get sanctified, you have the holiness life afterwards. They mock him for that. Okay, And they say, you shouldn't really bring this idea up. But the real idea is brought up in Hebrews chapter, chapter 3 and 4. If you look there, Paul, I think he wrote the book of Hebrews. And he tells you, hey guys, I'm using them as an illustration of holiness. And he says, what happened to those guys? They didn't enter by faith, and so they died in the wilderness. He's using the exact example. And he says, hey, there's still a rest that remains for who? Sinners? Uh-uh. The people of God. You know, if you want to be holy, you need to enter into that rest. Let's not be like them who missed it because they didn't, because of disobedience and unbelief. Instead, you need to go in by faith. Okay, there it is again, the whole idea. So the whole book is about trying to get the people sanctified. And friends, notice it. It is the meanest book that we have in the whole Bible. I really think so. If you look at, I mean, it's talking to believers, and it's as mean as it can be. In Hebrews chapter 6, who, nobody likes reading that verse. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, which is right about after the part about going on into perfection. He says this, he says, you know, anybody who's tasted of the heavenly gift, who's had all these blessings given to them, if they fall away, it's impossible to bring them back to repentance. You know, friends, this is basically a whole book on holiness or hell. You see what I'm trying to say? Either get it. You believers who need to get it because you come to age accountability or you are going to get big time messed up. And then he goes to Hebrews chapter 10. Remember that one? That's even worse. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, 27, 28, 29, he says this. He says, if we deliberately keep on sinning, after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment that will consume the enemies of God. Friends, he's not talking to sinners. He's talking to Christians who should be going into holiness by now, and he's saying, if you don't get it, this is what's going to happen to you. And he's telling you that you are insulting the spirit of grace. You're resisting God. Don't keep on sinning. Don't deliberately go back to that lifestyle. Don't even have a heart that says, I want to go back. <laughs> and, and we'll get into more of that tonight. But it's holiness or hell. Hebrews 12, 14. And then finally, <clears throat> dry bones coming together. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 7, it tells you that the people of Israel are going to come back as a nation in 1948. It's happened. All right? So it is a symbol of the whole nation of Israel, literally. But it's also a picture, friends, a symbolic picture of us being brought to life in God. You'll notice that it has some signs of life when those bones came together. It still says they're dead. Okay, I agree with that. But the scripture says that they started to have tendons form and all these different things. And they still weren't completely what God wanted them to be. So it took a second touch. You see what I'm trying to tell you here? He had to breathe into him the breath of life. All right? And that's the idea of being sanctified in the passage. Breath enters into him, Ezekiel 37, verse 9. And that is an end times prophecy. The people of Israel are going to not only become a nation, but at the end of the tribulation period, when they're cleaned out, and they finally get who the real Messiah is as a nation, it says they're going to be sanctified. Not just saved, they're going to be sanctified. And Jesus is going to be the head of their nation. They're going to be the head of the world. Awesome time. Don't miss what comes before all that, the rapture. <laughs> I mean, friends, I have a whole teaching on that too. But we won't go there. All right, New Testament. Are we done? Do we have 10 minutes? 10. All right, in the New Testament, Jesus breaks in. There's all kinds of little pictures of holiness. Okay, here's one of them. The axe is already at the root of the tree. See, you ever heard a holiness preacher say, you got to get to the root of the problem? You know, they say, hey, don't use that term eradication. Well, here's the idea. You can hear it in there, okay? Take out the root of sin, okay? It's not just the fact you are sinning. It's the fact you have a root, okay? And that's the problem. So the axe, because of what Christ has done, the axe is already at the root of the tree. Oh, whoops. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. 